Chlorine has been used for large-scale disinfection of public water supplies for more than a century. It was not readily accepted at first, and it took many years to understand how to control its use. Consistent chemical supplies, metering, and monitoring equipment are now more consistent and allow for more precise application, allowing water operators to meet higher expectations and more stringent regulations. The primary goal of water treatment regulations is to protect public health, and waterborne pathogens are one major focus. In the U.S., the Safe Drinking Water Act regulates the disinfection of public water supplies. SDWA regulations, including the Total Coliform Rule, the Surface Water Treatment Rule, and the Groundwater Rule, specifically address microbial protection. Following the discovery of trihalomethanes, or THMs, in the 1970s, disinfection strategies became more complicated. Newer rules set specific limits on disinfection byproducts, or DBPs, and cap allowable residual disinfectant levels. In the U.S., regulations place high demands on water system operators. No longer are they simply dosing water with a preset feed rate. A careful balance must be struck to achieve simultaneous compliance, adjusting treatment strategies and disinfectant application to meet the demands of specific, and often changing, water supplies. In modern water treatment processes, chlorine has several uses. It is often used as a primary disinfectant, where a larger dose is applied for a sufficient contact time to destroy or inactivate pathogens. It is also used as a secondary disinfectant, the main preservative for drinking water added as a final step before water leaves the treatment plant to control biological regrowth in the distribution system. In addition to disinfection, chlorine is also useful in controlling algae growth within the treatment plant, oxidizing iron and manganese, and taste and odor control. It can also improve the coagulation process for particle removal. However, the use of chlorine contributes a distinct odor that consumers may complain about. Free residual chlorine reacts with naturally occurring organics, such as humic acids and bromide, producing disinfection byproducts with health concerns, not all of which have yet been regulated. Trihalomethanes and haloacetic acids are regulated such that chlorination must be controlled so as not to produce levels that are too high. As such, water treatment operators and engineers must understand how chlorine disinfection works, how to monitor and control the application of chlorine, and how to maintain a sufficient but not excessive chlorine residual. Chlorine is effective, economical, and readily available. It remains the most common disinfectant in North America. It is a strong oxidizing agent and reacts with various types of organic substances, metals, and ammonia.